up? It's Grace and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of August. I have read six books last month because it's the third right now which is this video is a little late but I read six books last month which is freaking great for me because I haven't read that much in a while. Some of them I loved, some of them I didn't like at all. Um, so I'm excited to talk about them so let's get into it. The first book that I read this month, I'm sure so many of us have read it, and that is The Cursed Child by John Tiffany and Jack Thorne, which is considered the eighth book in the Harry Potter series. I don't consider it that. I don't have it anymore because I sold it to my local used bookstore. The reason why I did that was because I did not like the book at all, and I know that I can't compare the play to the previous series, and I know that I can't do that. And going into this book, I was like, I'm not gonna try and compare it. And it wasn't even the fact that it was just not good. Like, um, the things that happened in the book would never happen, and it contradicted a lot of the rules that were in the Harry Potter series. And nothing I like about it except maybe Scorpius, but even him, I think the reason why he was such a great character is because they wanted the fans to get kind of like a redemption arc for Draco that we never really got. Um, I think it was just a lot of people said it was fan fiction and I totally agree with that. It is, and it was so out there and very far-fetched to me. I didn't like it. I'm, s I'm not sorry about it. I'm sorry that this is considered the eighth book. That sounds very horrible of me to say, but it just, it's not, and I think that if you have an eighth book in a Harry Potter series, the most epic book series I think in the world, why? It's very hard for me to talk about it because actually I'm kind of angry and I'm never really angry about a book series or anything like that, but it is my favorite series of all time and to see it continue in that way, I just was not happy about it and I ended up giving it one out of five stars. I haven't given a book one out of five stars in over two years, so if that tells you something, that tells you something. Moving on. The next book that I read is A Sky is Everywhere by Jenny Nelson, and this follows a girl named Lenny, which happens to be my dog's name, so that was weird reading a main character with name Lenny. Um, her sister actually happened to pass away, and so she's having to deal with that, and also she kind of has these feelings for her dead sister's boyfriend, which is all sort of like morally wrong, but is it? Because people deal with grief in a weird way. I, oh, okay, this book was enjoyable. I read it super quick. I think Jenny Nelson has a great, like, messy kind of writing style, which I really enjoy. Love her themes that, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. There's no reasoning sometimes to why people do what they do. They just do it out of grief or they do it out of coping. And so I get that. But these characters are so incredibly frustrating. And sometimes it, the things, the choices that Lenny made made me uncomfortable. And I'm like, what are you doing, girl? But I understand in the sense that you do things that you don't have explanations for because life is not, you don't need to explain things all the time. So I really enjoyed that. I was a little bit disappointed with having loved I'll Give You the Sun, but I still really enjoyed this. It was fun and it was frustrating and I ended up giving it three out of five stars. The next book that I read was Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin, which if you didn't know is a reimagining of World War II as if Hitler won the war. It is insane and terrifying and crazy and beautiful. Um, we follow this girl and she had been previously experimented on in a Nazi concentration camp and because of that or as a result of that she's able to skin shift so she can change her body and her face to whoever she's thinking about. And going into this book, I didn't know that, and that added a whole other crazy element, which was insane and awesome. So she's able to skin shift, and she works with like this Nazi, anti-Nazi, or like this kind of like uh, rebellion people, and they want her to pretend to be this kind of like famous motorcycle girl so she can win the race, and whoever wins this motorcycle race um, gets to not meet Hitler, I guess, but like be close to him, so she has the opportunity to kill him. And it is insanely amazing. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time, and all I could think about while reading this book was it'd be such a good movie. Such a good movie. So if anyone is, you know, in contact with some film directors, write this screenplay up and make a movie because I will watch it and I will probably give you the most profit because I'll go and watch that movie every day of my life. <laughs> so yeah, I gave this book five out of five stars. This book that I finished, because I started it like almost a year ago when I got like 80 pages in and I put it down because it was a little bit off and weird for me, I didn't really enjoy it, and that is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because it's you shouldn't know what Colleen Hoover books are about personally for me because 
Um, it all kind of, it's just kind of confusing in a way. I, what can I say about this book? It was enjoyable when I picked it back up. I read it in, or I finished it in the same day. Um, the characters are so frustrating, you just want to punch them over and over again. There was a big reveal in here that made me so uncomfortable, or not so uncomfortable, but so like, what the frick is going on? It wasn't a good reveal like, oh my gosh, that's crazy, that's shocking. It's like, did they really just go there? And it, it's hard for me to describe the emotion that I felt because I might, you know when your like, scalp prickles and your blood gets really hot because I don't know what the reaction, I don't know what that emotion is called, but I didn't like it. And, but this book was enjoyable and I actually did end up liking the characters a bit more than I thought I was. They are frustrating, but I ended up giving this book three out of five stars. The next book that I read, I was sent by Penguin and it was a wonderful surprise because I didn't know I was good in it. And that is An Arc of A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir, which is the second book in the Ember and the Ashes trilogy series. I still don't know what it's gonna be. This was really good. I think I liked it a little bit less than An Ember and the Ashes, but nonetheless, it was really interesting and different from a lot of YA fantasy series because it's so freaking brutal. You don't think it's gonna happen and it does. There is no like, there's no comfortable line that, you know, because sometimes you read a book and you're like, that's not gonna happen because th that wouldn't happen. It's just, it's gonna be a happy ending and it usually does. And this one, you don't know where the story is gonna go because there is no line that cannot be crossed because she crosses a lot of lines in these books. And I really love that because I'm always, I'm, I always don't know what's going to happen. And I really enjoyed this. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. The last book that I read I'm so excited to talk about because it was so unexpectedly amazing. I just picked it up because I thought it was going to be creepy. But it ended up being everything that I really didn't know that I wanted. And that is A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGuinness. This follows a girl named Grace, ha, Grace, and she lives in an insane asylum because her family put her there because she's pregnant and they don't want her to tarnish their name, but little do you know there's a lot more shit that's going on with the family because just they're pretty effed up. And um, she is slowly being crippled by madness because the people in the insane asylum treat their patients like horribly. And so one day this guy, this doctor comes and he usually does like lobotomies if you don't know what lobotomy is. It used to be a practice a long time ago where you like, you cut the frontal lobe or something and basically the person is not a person anymore. They're kind of just like law. They don't understand. I just maybe looked lobotomy up because I don't really know how to explain it. But he usually does that to the patients and he actually sees her and he sees this intelligence in her that he hasn't seen and he wants to take her and have her help him solve murders. You guys, it was so good. And it, it may not sound good, I don't know how I'm explaining it, but it was so amazing and Grace is really suffering from a lot of shit. Sorry, excuse my language, but she has been through so much and there's also an amazing friendship in this book. And there's basically no romance, which I loved because you're really focusing on her character and how she's really coping with stuff. And it was just so good. And I loved the doctor because he kind of had this like one track mind on how he wanted to solve murders and how he didn't really, um, he didn't have like emotional component. He didn't think about patient or like dead people as dead people. He just looked at them as like puzzles to solve. And he was just very interesting because he was mad himself with wanting to know and he was just a brilliant character, if I'm explaining it right. Just like he's like Sherlock to me, but cooler, I guess. Um, anyway, I ended up giving this book five out of five stars. I think everyone should read this, but also I hope I didn't put your expectations way too high. So um, just know that I loved it, five out of five stars. So those are all the books that I read in the month of August. If you've read any of these and you want to tell me your thoughts, I'd love to know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.